What's up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. Walking up to our beautiful carport. Got the Mini X getting warmed up. Gonna be taking it over to the entrance of the fenced in portion of the property now. This is part three of our gate build. If you guys remember, we fenced off the house from the rest of the acreage. And the reason being is all the animals like to come over here. They poop, they eat everything, they destroy stuff all the time. And I had just had enough of it. So I spent a good amount of money and some lumber. We got all the house fenced off. There's five gate openings, four of which we're putting just regular tractor supply, manual opening gates. One's actually gonna get a motor on it at some point, but the other three will just be manual because I don't want to spend a million dollars on gate motors to have every single gate opening with a motor. The reason I wanted so many gate openings is so if you're bringing the tractor around, you don't have to like drive all the way around to get to one side. There's openings everywhere and make it convenient. And now we're currently working on the most important opening and that is the one we're gonna come in and out of every single day. And that one has to be motorized. Otherwise, it's pointless to me. I see a lot of properties in my area where they have to get out every single day, open their gate, drive in, get back out, close the gate, lock the gate. Gate motors aren't that expensive. It's like make your life easier and put a motor on these things. So if you watched the last couple of videos, you saw when we actually built the gate that we we're going to be working with today. So the gate made it out here last night just fine. And going down our bumpy roads, so if there's gonna be a weld that's gonna crack, it's during that time. Everything seems to look nice and fantastic. So this is obviously the opening where it's gonna go. There's gonna be another post right there. It's not gonna be this giant, but it's still gonna be 20 feet wide. And I know this looks like an obnoxiously long gate and it kinda is because when you're coming down the driveway, if we did a short one, it would just look too small, number one. Number two, if you're coming from this side of the property and you wanna turn into here with a trailer, anything narrower than 20 feet, you're just not gonna make the turn because you have a tree right there. You have to go swing way out that way. So you know, dollars and cents wise, it's not that much more money to go with a little bit bigger of a gate. So we went with a little bit bigger of a gate. Abel's marking out where we need to dig because this driveway slopes up. So from this side to here, I don't even know. It's a pretty good change, maybe. It's definitely over a foot, maybe 16 inches. So things are gonna get a little bit interesting because I built this gate to be level. So I wanna dig this down level, which means we'll have to kinda grade the dirt into it on both sides so it's not doing something funky and you don't have like this drop off uh, when you go to drive over where the gate's gonna be. Once we get this dug down, we have to pour forms because we need a concrete to go here and then to that post and then 20 feet back, give or take, a little bit less than 20 feet. Uh, that way the gate can roll all the way open back behind where Abel is standing. All of that side's gonna support is the weight of the gate, which is probably, I don't know, 250, 300 pounds, maybe. Whereas this side has to support the gate plus anything driving over top of it. So if I'm pulling in here with my truck, trailer, my excavator on the back, a loaded down dump trailer, it's gonna see a lot of weight right here. So this one we wanna make sure is into native and it's super solid. Now Abel did find, and I don't know what these are, but we've got two stakes indicating something. I have no idea what. We're gonna call this one the fence one because that's like right in my fence line. So we're just gonna say that indicated where my fence needed to go, but that is not true at all. I don't know what these are for. Typically surveyors use these if you're deciding where your house pad's gonna go. Um, could there be utilities under here? Possibly, I believe the phone line does run somewhere around here because I've hit the conduit that that runs in when we're doing the front entrance. Power wise, power runs over here. Water runs somewhere in here. The other thing is we don't have the laser. Papa Rhino took it, it's in his truck. So until Papa Rhino gets here, we don't have a laser. Check as we're digging to make sure this is perfectly flat. So we've got some spectators today. We've got our cat, we've got Gunner. What's up, buddy? I know, you wanna climb through this fence, huh? What's up, big boy? Good morning. Good morning. Oh, hello, how are you? You wanna say hi? You haven't been on the channel much. This is Rocky. Rocky is the destroyer of all things rodents, rabbits, squirrels. I mean, she is a freaking beast. Since we don't have the transit laser, we are just using my Bosch, uh, I don't know what the exact word for this is, but my Bosch laser. What this does is it projects a green laser all the way across to where Abel's at. Thankfully, we're in the shade right now, even though green lasers are always brighter than red when it comes to tools like this, so buy the green lasers, but it can still be hard to see outside. So thankfully, since we're in the shade, we can see it. Uh, okay, so, oh, so yeah. So you can see the line right there. Then obviously we have to measure down because that is four and a half inches above the top of that post. This fence we put in level coming all the way across. So we want to keep it level. So see this is the Marca. Get him pulling out. So that's going to give us our height. We're going to put in this last post. Um, we're going to use the string line as our height as well as our, you know, where that post is going to end up being. And then we're going to measure. We want 20 foot. Remember that we want it from the inside to the inside of that one because our two by two is gonna sit 
about right here on that post. And that's why when we were building the gate, we put on those little wing extensions so we could sit this thing perfectly center. We have the wing extensions that are gonna come past on this side, and that's where the guide rollers are gonna be as well as the gate motor, and they'll be able to grab onto those extension pieces. All right, so this post gives us our full opening now, 20 foot inside to inside. And then we actually now have a level line that we can measure down. So three foot six is where the top of concrete needs to be. So we need to be down three foot six, top of concrete. And the gate's gonna sit on the top of the concrete, but obviously we need space down below for the concrete. So we're thinking, Eh, eight to 10 inches here of curb. I've only got so many sacks of concrete up here at the ranch, I don't wanna go get any more. So we're gonna try to maximize what we have. So right here, we need to be three foot six on top of concrete. We are three foot five. So we gotta dig this down probably nine inches. And then it's just gonna get crazier as we go over here. I think over here, we gotta go down like 16 inches. <laughs> it's pretty significant. We are three foot or two foot 10. Also, if at any point my math is completely wrong and off today, uh, let's see, I went to bed at 4 a.m. this morning editing the last YouTube upload, so my brain's probably not functioning properly. Well, the GoPro battery died before <laughs> we even got most of this dog. I dug it from this side as opposed to digging it lengthwise, like we would typically dig a trench or a footing because I didn't want to have to remove the string line. The string line is what we were using to measure down to get our depth since we don't have our laser. So when you dig like this, and this stuff is freaking rock hard, like the excavator barely broke through some of this. So Abel's gonna come back in and we're gonna chip out and straighten up this edge because when you're digging, this way you get a little you don't really get a straight edge on that side I mean you can if the dirt's great and you can just you know kind of poke at it with the teeth on the bucket But when it's this hard you're not gonna be able to put a straight edge on that I mean we could but we'd be here for hours. So we're gonna get it cleaned up I mean it is a significant ways down remember we're gonna come up eight inches though for our curb And even with the roto hammer and a point on it it is uh, still pretty tough to get through but we're almost done here almost got things dug and we're gonna go set our forms Papa Rhino showed up, had him bring a, an extra pallet of concrete. That way we're not gonna run into the issue we ran into when we were doing the carport. Uh, we wanna make sure we have plenty of concrete available. I'm also in the super wide angle lens again, so if things look weird, that's why. Now, obviously the yard slopes, well, maybe not obviously, but in person, you can tell the yard slopes down this way. So as we're coming out here, we're starting to come out of the ground a little bit. And let's see, we only need to be down so far. We're looking for four foot two. We're just shy of four foot one, so we'll come down a little bit more. Now we're gonna take the mini truck. Oh man, looks like the guys lost my little gooseneck cover plate. And let's go grab some lumber for our forms. Ugh, come on, old girl, fire up. First try, I'm feeling it. Almost. There we go, there we go. We'll go out this way, since our uh, kind of entrance is blocked right now. And this is gonna be the other gate that's gonna get powered, because we like to pull through right here and then just drive straight out this way around the house and leave instead of having to come in here, back up, turn around and go out that way. So this one will eventually get just like a gate mule, one of the cheap tractor supply. Uh, I mean, well, I say cheap, they're actually kind of expensive now. Uh, but a sol I think a solar gate mule is like almost back up to the 600 bucks. So this one will get a solar gate opener. So the gate we're doing right now and this gate, the only two powered gates that are gonna be coming out of the house portion of the property. All right, let's go get us some lumber. You guys remember when I made this window out of a piece of plexiglass? Uh, essentially saving a ton of money on having a glass company make the mold for it because you can't find these anywhere. This has been holding up phenomenally. That was a great decision to do. Skirt, skirt under the hunting blind. We're running out over here. And we have arrived at the tweaker shed. Let's see if we got any two by sixes in here. Oh, yeah. 
actually do. Look at that. Big old stack of two by sixes right there. Okay, oh, and look at that, a wheelbarrow. We've been looking for this one. You know, this thing was an absolute nightmare to get here, but I'm glad we picked up this tweaker shed. We have some two by sixes. This was actually ripped down. That's not a true two by six. Some of these are a little bigger than others. So typically with concrete forms, if you see us siding them, we don't really care too much about this tall axis being out this way, because we can usually fix that with stakes. It's this axis that we want to be flat, because there's not much you can do about this axis. This has some waves in it. That means as we're floating along the top of it, the concrete's gonna have some waves in it. So we always pre-select our lumber when we're at the lumber yard. Now it's not super crucial for something like this, but take a minute, let's pick your best side. I think there's footing here for this wall, so we'll probably end the track right here, close enough. Our form is gonna sit here and our concrete's gonna go here. So we're gonna be on the back side, right? Our eight inch curb is gonna go here in relation to these posts. Reason being is I don't wanna encapsulate the posts in concrete. And then later on, if we gotta remove these, they're in the concrete and we gotta do some weird stuff. So see, Abel's going ahead and presetting all of the stakes and we've got our line here that's obviously the inside of the form the form's going to go here so he's using his torpedo level which is the exact thickness of the lumber that we're going to be putting in what he does there is he'll plumb the stake up off of our line using that torpedo as the guide away from the line which leaves him an inch and a half puts the stake in ahead of time then all we got to do is we come in we mark the stakes and we set our two by six to those marks that's how we do house foundations and all that just makes it super simple you can see he's having to use a metal stake to kind of pre-open up a hole then he's coming in with a roto hammer with a one inch bit to leave a pocket to be able to smack that wooden stake into the ground oh yeah with the lady huh the potty. right now it's the potty or no see 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 okay one side is already set again you can see we just kind of went in between the posts now we're going to come over eight inches they are cutting some eight inch spacers so we'll just slap those in then we can slap this board on throw our stakes in and then we are essentially ready to start mixing up some concrete. You know, one of the things I'm glad we did at one point was buy up a lot of block when it was somewhat affordable and cheap and rebar. I wish I could stockpile just a ton of concrete, but we don't really have that option. So we'll grab two half inch bars. Uh, let's see which, which ones are gonna cooperate. You two, there we go. Alrighty, this is why I want powered gates. We're gonna go grab the mixer with the mini truck. Swing this booger on open. Now ideally with this gate as well as the one over there, I would like to put the uh, in-ground sensors that sense when a vehicle pulls up so it opens automatically. However, uh, like for the front gate, the ones at least that are from the company that I ordered the motor from, they're $200 a piece. I would like them on both sides, so you never even have to push a button. Just pull up, it opens whether you're coming or going. Uh, but at $200 a piece, we're gonna hold off on that for a while. All right, let's back her on up. Throw a little wheel chalk there, because I just tried to pick it up and she started rolling towards Dedek's Jeep. All right, now the fun part. Nope, 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 she's still rolling. Stop rolling. Oh, we gotta go forward. Oh, no, we're going backwards. All right. We gotta get it to here. And we pick it up and move it over sideways since we can't roll it forward because uh, she's too heavy and she's on a slope. Most awkward tongue jack setup ever. Well, not even a jack. Awkward tongue setup ever. And then whoever invented this style of ball connection coupling probably never used them in the field. Oh, come on. We're so close. Come on, Booker. Let's go. Today is the day. All right, today's not the day. If we're on somewhat level ground, I'll just leave the truck with the parking brake off and then I can just pull the truck back, but it's not exactly how that works. This is why I just grabbed it with the Mini X last time. There we go, there we go. Woo. All right.
Now we've made our way into the Coyote tractor, and it is nice jumping in this thing, being in the shade all day instead of it cooking in the sun. The Coyote is nowhere near as bad as the excavator, though. The excavator obviously has no tint on the windows. That one gets toasty inside. The tint helps out a lot, but man, that carport back there being covered, it's nice. I know I say it a lot, but slowly but surely, we're getting the finer things in life here out at the ranch. Now we're gonna try to offload the full pallet of concrete today. Uh, it's just the three of us. If we had an extra set of hands, maybe we'd like separate the pallets, but I think we can do it. However, just to be safe, uh, I'm gonna get the forks in there, I'm gonna pick up a little bit, and then we're gonna have Papa Rhino drive out from underneath me. That way I'm not trying to back up and the weight of the tractor kind of transfers. All right, here goes nothing. Ooh, tractor don't like it. No, tractor don't like it. No. Hey, well, we know the tractor is there, yeah. Now nah, we're too high up, it's too heavy. I get the whole tractor starting to, we'll just have to break the pallet down. That's almost a thousand pounds off. Yeah, all right, so we're gonna take off one and a half rows. That's almost a thousand pounds we're gonna be removing from it. And then we should be able to pick the pallet off. All right, let's see if we can do it now. If you're gonna do it, just do it, but drive straight, don't turn. Closing my doors and putting the sheep out over this one in case we go over. She's, she's feeling a little tippy, but we got it up. As long as Papa Rhino pulls out straight, we're good. If he turns, we're gonna destroy the bedsides. Uh, look at that. I think me almost rolling this thing on day one has definitely, uh, you know, gotten me to earn some respect for the farm tractor. And they are not skid steers. They do not act like skid steers. See how things can go wrong very quickly. All righty, y'all. Let's see if this old girl will fire up. Mucha de finger. Sí, otra vez. Maybe aquí. Sí. Está ahí, bo. Alrighty y'all, here goes this fun process again. Mixing it all in sacks. Alrighty, we are ready. First wheelbarrow. Alisto, Evo. Here. Yeah. Yeah, that's for me. I start, maybe. You guys can see the donkeys have snuck in. They found out that gate was open, so now they're all in here. Well, y'all, it's a good thing we had that extra pallet brought up, because uh, we're probably going to use Dang near a whole pallet, so that's almost a yard. I mean, an eight inch by eight inch curb is a pretty good sized curb. Uh, and then if you're going 40 feet, which we are, we're gonna shrink it, because really we don't need to go over 40 feet off this backside. Once the gate's open, uh, remember the gate has four foot six to the edge, so the wheel can be four foot six in, which means the track can be four foot six in, and the curb can be four foot six in. But that would have ended it like right here, somewhere in the middle of the two posts, which I don't think would have looked good, so we're gonna run it extra long yeah I don't, I don't remember where it ends but we're running it extra long so it just ends at that post um it'll just 
look less like it was kind of a half-assed job stuck in the middle. Uh, Bob Rhino is just pushing the rebar down in once we get the mud in there. Instead of trying to suspend it in place, uh, it's not that serious for a little curb like this. Got, uh, let's see, three bags left out of that full pallet. We're gonna see how far this gets us. Uh, the mixer was pretty much full, so that's why we stopped and, it just, and didn't just mix them all. But now we're working our way from there back. It's, it's gonna be close. We might end up using that full pallet. Look at these jerks over here. Hey, stop eating that. You guys know you ain't supposed to be in here tossing this dang place. All right, I've opened your gate. Skedaddle. Four by four. Able to wood. Oh, oh, this baby, I'll push it. Don't, don't let it. Don't let it go by itself. That's almost one yard there. Good boy, Mosco. Good. I've not other problem with this. Do you like sack toy? Well, a poquito extra. See you guys. Let's see. I think we got a little extra. Go with the shovel. She wrote. Do you, you want to talk to him? They're, they're gonna be mad. Yeah, they... let's do a little bit less talking and more friggin' work. I thought, I thought you wanted to talk to him. Yeah, we did. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's all right. There's a couple of weird spots. Oh, but... you know, it's just y'all she is all troweled out nice and smooth looking good uh we had to put all this stuff in the way so the donkeys don't walk over here we already had goat prints in here that we had to take out a minute ago we've got one cat paw print uh somewhere in here where is it right there and of course there's a leaf sitting right on it we're gonna leave that track's gonna cover it even if it wasn't i feel like paw print's kind of cool willie's gonna try to find a way around come on buddy come on buddy what's up willie what's up buddy tell all the other donkeys to not step on this tonight okay can you do that for me? Can you tell them all to not step on it? All right, yep, okay, just uh, just, just kiss my neck. That's not weird at all. You're a good boy. Oh, you're a good boy. Oh, you're a good boy. So tomorrow we're going to strip the forms. We're going to test fit the gate. We're going to start grading out this driveway because we've got a lot of sloping we got to do to meet down there. Uh, should be another busy day. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah.
Uh. Yeah. 